All right, hi guys and welcome to the video. In this video, we are gonna unleash the power of Python with C Sharp. How powerful it is when we combine multiple programming language. So I did the last video with Node.js and Python. In this video, it's gonna be C Sharp and Python. We'll be writing some amazing example. I'm gonna show you a live example where I'll be doing some request in Python, returning JSON data back in C Sharp, right? Let's get started. So I'm on my Visual Studio. Gonna open my terminal. Gonna create a project. All right, so let's get started. So I'm gonna create a .NET project, .NET, um, I'm gonna say .NET new cons con console output, uh, oops, output and I'm gonna call um, pi c sharp. Okay, pi c sharp, right? So uh, here you can see simple project, right? Um, let me, yeah, and let me just uh, run the hello world and see if it's working. And then I'll show you the Python and C sharp. So I'm gonna say ls cd pi c sharp, right? Now in order to run, I'm gonna say dot net run, right? And it should print basically hello world, okay? So it's gonna take a while, but since it's compiling for the first time, should print hello world. All right, here you can see it's printed out hello world, right? Now let's combine Python, right? That's what we are waiting for. That's what everyone is waiting for, right? So this channel is for Python, right? So uh, touch, let's uh, develop a script. Scripts.py, right? In the same directory, okay? Now I'm gonna open that script.py. Now I'm gonna write, start writing some Python code right, right here, okay? So bear with me. Uh, there you go. Yep. So let me pin my windows so you can see it better. Let me zoom this. Let me also hide my uh, console. That's better, right? So let's do Python. RQ request, right? So we imported the request. We need the JSON. We also need OS. We also need sys. So if any of this is missing, uh, all right, simple uh, import statements, right? You agree? Let me zoom out. Okay. Not something high tech, right? Now I'm just gonna write some code here, right? So I'm gonna make a couple of requests here. So that's my website, by the way, and it's free of cost, right? You can make API uh, calls from this website. So if you don't know, let me, uh, I'm just telling you because it's free of cost, it's open source. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm doing this for the community, right? So I just have a URL here, let me get rid of that. Right, and this is Python, and then I'm gonna show you how I'm combining with C sharp, right? So that's the URL. Uh, so I'm gonna make a request, right? So request dot, or let me just do this instead of wasting your and my time. So better, right? Creating a JSON data, right? And just doing a uh, printing the JSON data, right? Nothing so fancy. Let's do the C sharp version of this. Now I'm gonna call the code from C sharp, right? So I'm gonna go to my C sharp code right here, right? I can do object oriented state of the art, but uh, wanna keep the videos short and simple because beginners are also watching. Remember, we are not the only one. So in the C sharp, um, we need couple of imports here and those couple of imports would be here as follow. So I would say using, I would say using system.io system.io then I'll be using system diagnostic so right so these are the two models that I need that's all I need okay now let's start writing the c-sharp code to call the python file right so get rid of that in c-sharp it's capital I forgot ah my bad 
because I was using a Windows computer a few days back. So now my hands are not like uh, steady on my new Mac keyboard. So I need to get used to it now. <laughs> All right. So basically here I'm going to define my that Python file name. Uh, we just named it, I think, scripts.py. Okay. Make sure the spelling and everything is correct. Okay. Don't make any mistakes here. Okay. So here you can see S-C-R-I-P-T-S, S-C-R-I-P-T-S.py. And let's paint the uh, window. Why am I getting squiggly lines? Variable file name is not assigned, but yeah, I know it's okay. Don't give me that. Okay, so basically, once you have defined the file name, we need to create a process info. So we can do that by following command. Uh, let me make sure the indentation. Yep. So uh, what we'll do is basically we'll say process, right? Start info, and then we'll create a process info. The code is there on the description so don't worry about that we create an object of that so i would say process uh, start info right and i would call um, python 3 all right so uh, why are you giving me squiggly lines because i forget it that's why always all right, so we created a process info, then we need to uh, basically, we need to make sure that we can read the uh, data right from the output. So, so I'm gonna write some comments. All right, now, so with that process info that you created, the object that you created process info, right? You will say use shell, right? So use shell execute, right? And we'll set that to false. Then we need something else. So we'll say process info. Then we'll say dot redirect standard output. Redirect standard output. Oh, not input, redirect standard output. Because we are redirecting the output, right? So we'll set that to true, okay? Now what we need to do is basically um, we need to give this arguments to the process info. So again, we'll say process info dot arguments. Here you can see arguments and I would pass in the Python file name that I just defined up, right? So Python file name, right? Now I will actually create a, create a process. I would say process, right? My process is equal to i will create an object process right so you just create an object of process i can create a library for you i can create a nice class so you can use it with one line of code just supply the python file name it will give you the json back in c sharp i'll do that don't worry okay so that's done okay so we have the my process we created a new process now basically uh, we need to assign the information to the process so we'll say okay so basically what we'll do is basically the process that we just created my process the object or the instance of the class right so we'll say start info right and basically we'll give the our process info down so this will basically start stuff and then we can just start it right so i would say my process dot start oops made a mistake all right start and don't forget the semicolons this is c sharp not python always forget that so <laughs> Right, so now it's pretty easy. Now we just need to read the data. So we'll create a stream object, right? So I can do that, quite simple this one, right? So what I did, what I, what I did is basically just created a, a, I just created a stream object to read the data. I think we have a indent spelling mistake here. Uh, let's correct that. Uh, let me do this. Okay, and uh, I think I need to change this to. All right. Okay, so that's your C sharp code, uh, just creating a process object and then running it. Now let's run our ASP.NET app application. 
I think it won't run because uh, it's messed up. Uh, yeah. Give me one sec. Um, actually, I copy pasted it, so <laughs> I don't want to do that. Let, let's just keep writing the code. I don't want to take the easy way and you know just get it done. Okay. So now basically, I need to create a stream object. So I'm gonna say stream, stream reader, right? So I'm gonna create a stream reader, and let's say my my stream reader right we are creating an object so we'll say my process then we'll call the dot operator and then we'll say standard output standard output and now just three more lines of code okay uh, let's say string string and basically we'll create a string so that we can hold our result so i'm say i'll, I'll say my string and then we'll say the stream object that we just created that is the my stream reader then we can call dot read line uh, read line yep there you go read line right so once that is done we can close the process and print out the result so my process dot wait first we need to wait basically wait for exit and then just close it my process dot close Right now we can do CW tab to auto complete and print out the my string. And guys, this is C sharp. Okay, I'm not running a Python file now. So let's get the terminal now to prove you. Okay, I'm uh, just make sure. Okay, so I'll do ls. So I'll say dot net run. Okay, so it's a C sharp program now, not a Python file. And let's see. So it's gonna create do, do the process and we have a small issue uh it says name error r is not defined so there's a problem in the python file right uh it says data r dot json okay uh but why oh ah yeah my bad i did not do a request only so <laughs> yeah my bad sorry 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 extremely sorry so um i should have said um request dot get url and data is equal to data uh, dot uh, json yep now should be fine so i'm saying dot net run okay so make sure the c i'm running dot net okay and here you can see that's the output from the python file a json output from a python file in a c sharp I mean, this is very powerful. I don't know about you, but we did not use any kind of library like Iron or something, you know, that's available for Python 2 and stuff. We are using Python 3 with C Sharp and the application can be endless. You can, you know, do web scraping code in Python, call the, that code, get the JSON, display it on a website, do whatever you want. I mean, you know, you can run machine learning algorithms on Python and call it in the C Sharp ASP.NET application, MVC projects. You can create APIs in Blazor and link it with the Python files. I mean, the application is just endless. So the code will be there in our GitHub account. So make sure to check that out. If you have any more questions, please list them in the comment section below. And this is a string, by the way. Just want to tell you, uh, there's a library called as, um, what was that? uh i did that in the last video i forgot the name uh json um, it's it's popular library just to convert the string into json okay so just uh look it look 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 it up it's a very um popular library uh so that's it for this tutor tutorial uh, if you have any more questions please list them in the comment section and i would be very happy to assist you once again thank you for love support and see you guys in the next video